fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations, and nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! The Hanford Valley Center! The Lone Ranger, without his mask, but wearing a disguise, rode into the little town of Valley Center with Tonto. As they reined up in front of the cafe, a girl called to them. Howdy, stranger. Howdy. Oh, boy. You going into the cafe? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm Alice Brent. My brother Josh is in there. I'd like you to tell him that if he don't come out pronto, I'm riding home by myself. I don't care how many outlaws there are in the district. I'm not waiting any longer. Outlaws? That's what Josh claims. There's plenty of rustling, I know. But I don't care. I'm hitting the trail by myself. I'll tell him. Just say that I'm going. <laughs> Never mind, stranger. Thanks just the same, but here he is now. Josh! Howdy, sis. What do you think you're doing? I'm switching my saddle from Blackie to Sweet William. Oh, boy. No, you don't. I know what that means. You bet somebody they can't ride him. Steady there, boy. Put that saddle back on Blackie. You're riding home with me and you're trailing that no-good ornery bronc behind you. I'm going to sell him. Sell him? Sell Sweet William? <laughs> yep. I just wait till you get a look at the hombre that's going to buy him. Say, he's the fanciest dude you ever set your eyes on. From the east? He's so far from the east, you have to get your feet wet to get there. What? You uh, mean he's from England? Oh, uh, hey, how'd you guess it, stranger? Yes, sir, he's a Lord Duke himself. Well, go on home if you want to, sis, but you'll miss a lot of fun. I won't let you do it. Won't let me what? Come on out here in the middle of the street, Willie. You can't sell a tenderfoot the kinkiest cayuse west of the Mississippi. <laughs> oh, he won't buy him after he's tried him out. Listen, honey, this doggone dude asked me if we had any jumping horses in the west. Jumping horses? He didn't mean this kind of jumping horses. I've seen pictures of the kind he meant. <laughs> so have I, but jumping horses sure put me in a mind for Sweet William. So I offered to sell him. Now, what was this Englishman's name? Uh, Larry Winton. Oh. He'll be killed. No, no, he won't stay on long enough. I aim to see him get mussed up a little. That rubs me the wrong way to see a man looking so pretty. Oh, uh, you think it's all right, don't you, stranger? I, uh, don't believe there's any danger. You don't know Sweet William. Oh, there he is, and all the boys with him. <laughs> Is this the horse you meant, Mr. Prince? That's him, Duke. <laughs> I'm not really a duke. Well, duke or con, it's all the same to me. Uh, what do you think of the horse? Well, he's not at all the type we use for hunting. Much too short-legged, you know. He's the best jumping horse in the United States. A good bone and muscle, of course. Well, you want to climb aboard and try him out? Is there a fence around? Uh-huh. Just down at the end of the street. Oh, yes. Well, here we go. Get back, boys. 
What was that? Oh, nothing, nothing. Thanks, stranger. This is going to be awful. I'll just make sure of the cinch. I don't care if he is a dude. It isn't fair. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> He's getting up. Where the fuck? I told the truth when he said he was a jumper. Him buck plenty bad. He never seems to touch the ground. But stranger, the Duke's staying on him. I thought he might. I can't believe it. Nobody stays on Sweet William this long. Ride him, cowboy, ride him. Look at that. He's sending him down the street. That's where the fence is. Oh, no, he, he mustn't try to jump that fence. He'll break his neck. Let's get on our horses and follow him. Yes, hurry. Josh, stop him. Hey, big fella. Get up. Get him up, Scout. Everybody seems to have the same idea. Oh, we can't let him get hurt now. Gosh, this... You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Yeah, I am. Then get him off that horse. Uh, I can't manage this coyote so good. As long as the barkeep. I'll try to get close up. Oh, he stopped just short of the fence. He's riding back this way. That means he'll try the jump next time. Next time? Yeah, he's going at it again. Don't! The bronc won't take it. Oh, oh, oh. Let me help you up that horse, Duke. There's no need for that. I can manage. It must have been my fault, Mr. Brent, but... I couldn't seem to lift him up and over. You just better thank your lucky stars he didn't lift you up and over. Yeah, I got to hand it to you, Duke. Of course, I'll take your word for it that he's a good horse, but he isn't exactly what I'm looking for. Now, this white stallion here, this... Uh, hello, Larry. It is silver. You're the... We'll talk about that later. And Tonto. Aye. You came here for the same reason I... We'll that... talk about that later, too. You know each other, then. Oh, so that's why you weren't worried, stranger. You knew the Duke could ride that bronc. Now, this isn't the first time he's been offered a horse that could jump. You were on to me from the start. Oh, I'm afraid so. It took me some time to get used to your humor out here, but I understand it now, and I didn't want to spoil your joke. Oh, you hear that, boys? He didn't want to spoil it. <laughs> Say, you're all right, Duke. Wait a minute, though. You were the one who started it. It was your joke from the beginning. Well, let's say it was my way of getting acquainted, Miss... M Miss Brent. I'm Miss Coyote's sister. We're pleased to know you, Duke. If you're going to stay around the valley for a while, we'd be pleased to have you stay with oh, us. Sure, come on home with us now. Well, I... After you've had a talk with me, Larry, uh, got your horse and meet us outside the town. To the east? Yes, to the east. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. short time later, the Englishman rode east out of town, where he met the Lone Ranger and Tonto. As Larry started to rein up his horse, the masked man signaled him to keep riding. Silver and Scout ranged alongside, and the three headed along the trail. Where are you taking me? We'll rein up at the edge of those woods. Have you come from San Marco? We were there last week. We've been following your trail ever since. I had no idea I'd left one. You'd find it hard to travel anywhere in this country without being noticed. Now, this is far enough. Steady, Silver. Oh, boy. Boy. Oh, Larry... I only want you to answer one question. Well? Are you guilty or not guilty? Well, not guilty, I swear it. That's good enough for me. Now, tell us what happened. Well, I was working rather light, late at the bank one night. A band of six outlaws broke in. The safe was open. There was no way I could keep them from taking the money. Six outlaws? Well, there were six who came into the bank, but that was only part of the gang. There must be 20 altogether. Why did you leave town with them? Well, it wasn't my idea. Two of the men forced me to go to the hotel, to my room... Made me pack all my clothes, pay my bill, check out. A uh, gun at your back, I suppose. Well, not while I was at the clerk's desk. Their guns are ready in their holsters, but it was practically the same thing. I was only hoping that we might run into you, Mask. Oh, I say, you aren't Mask, are you? I'm uh, wearing a disguise. Indeed, that's very interesting. Uh, get on with your story, Larry. Oh, yes, my story. Well, nothing fabricated about it, though. Oh, we believe you're telling the truth. Quite. Well, they had a horse waiting for me outside the hotel. They made me ride with them. We met the rest of the men about ten miles from San Marco. Then we continued on our way for the rest of the night. A few hours sleep, and we were in the saddle once more. We traveled all that day and all the next night. Uh, which way? Toward the border. It was most uncomfortable. My hands were tied to the pommel of the saddle, and my horse was led. I believe you can still see the marks on my wrist. It's most uncomfortable. But uh, you did manage to escape? Well, not at all. On the evening of the second day, they gave me a horse and set me free. Even gave me money to buy food. Oh, I... I understand. It took me some time to do that. I'd already started back for San Marco when I suddenly realized that if I went back, I'd be thrown in jail. Packing my clothes, checking out the hotel, the money gone from the bank, what else could I expect? They believe you're guilty, all right. Who can blame them? Well, I thought that if I couldn't get back to San Marco, next best thing would be to follow the outlaws and capture them. By yourself? Oh, no, that's not quite in my line. Tell somebody where they were, a sheriff, or, or if I should happen to find you. You uh, managed to follow their trail? Oh, I lost it at Dos Bocas. But they were heading in this direction. They may be using this valley as their hideout. 
Yes, it's possible. There are canyons to the west. And plenty good ranch here. That's true, Tonto. They might try rustling. The pass to the north leads to Bennett City. They could settle cattle there. I'm pretty sure they still have the money from the bank with them. We'll make camp in this grove of trees, Larry. Well, may I stay with you? I, uh, I think you'd better stay at the Brent Ranch. See, I'll be wearing a mask from now on. Tonto and I will be scouting all over the valley. Oh, I'd like to help. After all, you'll be trying to clear my name. You can help more at the ranch. Now, uh, if you get any information about the gang, bring it to us. I will. At night, Larry. Don't come here except at night. night, the Lone Ranger and Tonto sat beside their small campfire waiting for the Englishman. Silver and Scout were grazing just beyond the clearing, their saddles and bridles hanging on the branch of a nearby tree. Well, we have our first clue, Tonto. Those tracks at the pass. We'll work our way west tomorrow and Horse see if... come, Kimosabe. I hear him. Maybe it's Larry. Yes, Tonto. I can't see his face, but he doesn't ride like a westerner. Howdy! You have news, Larry? Oh, indeed I have. Whoa, steady, fellow. Steady. Red hired a new cowhand today. I recognized him at once. Recognized him? The name he gave Josh was, was Pete something or other. When he rode with the gang, they called him Smokey. One of the outlaws. Well, there's no doubt of it. Uh, did you tell Brent? I wanted to tell you first. Did this man recognize you? Well, I suppose he must have. Of course, my face isn't quite as ugly as Smokey's, but I don't think he'd forget it quite so soon. He was close enough? Well, I came into the living room as Josh was hiring him. That's all I wanted to know. Shall I tell Brent? No, not yet. Smokey must have a reason for taking a job at the ranch. I want to find out what it is. Well, Tonto suggested rustling. Yes. You're not as safe as you have been, Larry. Smokey may decide it's dangerous to have you around. We'll give you protection. From now on, Tonto and I will keep an eye on him. Uh, by the way, what does he look like? He's a big fellow with a scar on his face. Right here. Get back to the ranch and stay there until you hear from us. Righto. Get up there, boy. Englishman heard from someone else before the Lone Ranger got to him. The following afternoon, he and Alice were sitting in the ranch house when the Englishman suddenly broke off in the middle of a sentence, listened a moment, then strode to the window. What are you doing at the window, Larry? Well, I heard some horses stop out in front. It must be the boys getting back from town. It's too late for visitors. You aren't expecting anyone, are you, Josh? No. Nope. There's two men coming up on the porch. Well, you're right. I'll see who it is. Hello, Alice. I've come for the Englishman. Sheriff. That's him. Just like your reward notice says. What are you talking about, Pete? That man's a bank robber. Larry? Yep. Your new hand here come to my office tonight. He told me that this fellow was wanted for a bank robbery in San Marco. Sure enough, when I fished down in my reward notices, I found one to fit him. Thousand dollars they're offering. Put out your hands, mister. It can't be true. Oh, I'm not guilty, Alice. This man who calls himself Pete was... Go on. What about him? He remembers me from San Marco, that's what. Just try and deny that. I can't deny it. What were you going to say, Larry? Nothing. But it's in time for that, Sheriff. Then stick out your hands and cut out the palavering. Very well, Sheriff. A bank robber, huh? It just goes to show you. Put those handcuffs back in your pocket, Sheriff. A masked man. And an engine. Over here, Larry. I'll move any of you. This sure proves that he's got outlaws for friends. Outside, Larry. Can I tell Josh and Alice? What that? good is your word against a reward notice? Hurry. Right up. Don't try to follow us. Get your men together, Josh. We're going after him. Right, Sheriff. <laughs> curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. As the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Larry Winton raced away from the Brent Ranch, they could hear Josh routing his men out of the bunkhouse. Them follow us plenty soon. Well, they'll never catch us. Silver doesn't seem to notice my extra weight at all. Hello. Uh, you see those rocks and trees up ahead? That Tonto see. I want you to take cover there. Well, isn't that dangerous so close to the ranch? They won't think any of us would stop so soon. That's right. Now make sure that Smokey is with the rest of the men. 
If he isn't, ride back to the ranch. Find him and follow him wherever he goes. Uh. If you got a chance, pick up Larry's horse in the corral. We'll meet you at our old camp near town. Uh. I'll leave you here. Get him up, Scott. Come on, Silver. <laughs> Ranger and Larry rode onto the camp in the woods. The horses were unsaddled, and Larry rolled up in his blankets beside the fire. But the masked man did not sleep. In the shadows beyond range of the firelight, he stood on guard while the long hours passed. The fire died down to ashes, and he threw more wood on it. Finally, as the stars paled, the Englishman turned. His eyes opened, and he saw the masked man. Oh. Hello there. You haven't slept at all, have you? No, Larry. Must be getting close to morning. About four o'clock. Any sign of Tonto? Not yet. They may have captured him. I don't think so. They should be glad that he hasn't returned. Why? Well, it means that Smokey wasn't with a posse. Wouldn't have taken Tonto any time to ride back to the ranch and get your horse. Oh, that's true. He'd have been here almost as soon Listen. as... Listen. Someone's coming. And you better put out the fire. Well, there's only one horse. No, two. I'd say the second one didn't carry a rider. Well, then... Here he comes. Tonto! Why you kill Did you find out anything, Tonto? Ah, uh, me find out plenty. Smokey not right with posse. You found him at the ranch? That right. Him not stay long, saddle up, head west. Toward the canyons? Ah, uh, Tonto follow him like you say. Trail lead to cave near canyon. The gang's hideout? That right. Many horse near cave, many men inside. But all we have to do is tell the Think sheriff... again, Larry. The sheriff would put us all in jail. Oh, not you. I'd explain to him that you were the lone ranger. It'd take more than your word to convince him. As long as the sheriff is trying to find you, the outlaws will feel safe. They go ahead with their plans. What are they? We've practically decided that. There aren't any banks in the valley. They must be after cattle. Oh, but there's more than one ranch. We can't watch all their herds. I have an idea. They'll strike at the Brent place. It was there that Smokey went for a job, and it's close to the pass. The cattle will have to be driven through the pass to get them to Bennett City. We'll wait for them there? Yes, Larry. We'll give the sheriff a chance to catch them red-handed. You mean we'll wait until they start the cattle through the pass and then go after the sheriff? That's it. Well, you said he wouldn't listen to us. It won't be a question of listening. When the right time comes, I'll find a way to make him follow me. Here, Silver. On the foot of fire. Yeah, I'll help you. Get into your saddle, Larry. We're heading for the pass? We're heading for the pass, steady boy. Oh, here, blanket. Good. Now the saddle. Uh, here. On she goes. To get bridled, What's the hurry? Boy. They won't try anything tonight, will they? Why not? Smokey knows that every one of Brent's men is riding with the sheriff. What better time could they find? Oh, I say it may be too late. Canyon, long way. Then let's start before Tonto leave. They'll have to cut out the cattle. Said he, big fella. Where are you coming, Tonto? All finish. Here, Scout. We'll get there in time if we make it fast. All right, boy, let's go. Get up there. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. <laughs> morning, just as the Lone Ranger had reasoned, the outlaws cut out part of the Brant herd and headed them toward the pass. The rustlers moved the cattle as fast as they could, hazing them along swiftly and efficiently. But in spite of their efforts, the cattle would not be hurried. With dawn, they were still in the pass. The sun's coming up, boys. Keep moving. I told you we couldn't get them through the pass before it got light. What's the difference? We ain't had any trouble, have we? You said there wouldn't be anybody guarding the herd. One cow hand. He's all tied up. He'll stay with us until after we sell the cattle in Bennett City. If the posse circles back this way. They won't. They cover this part of the valley when they started out. Maybe they got the Englishman. Well, then they take him to town and throw him in jail. Stop yelling till you get hurt. Yeah, I'd feel a whole lot better if we'd got these cows through the pass before it was light. Hand over the cash. Huh? Hand it over. It's all right. Right here in my saddlebag. Don't argue, Joe. Give it to me. <laughs> You're acting like a jackrabbit. All they know is run. Here. Uh, dig deeper. There's more. All right. We split that up when we get to Bennett City. Let me see. It's all there now. You getting tired of our company, Joe? It ain't that, Smokey. But you keep driving us all the time. Why can't we lay I... off for a while? Get down for one of the border towns and have some fun. I'll think about it. Hey, look. What's the matter now? There's a white horse breaking from the ridge. Over there. Yeah. It's another of Brent's men. That white horse belongs to the masked man I told you about. And that's a masked man riding him. Do we let him get away? Get away, nothing. Stop that, army boys. Get up there. After him. Use your gun. Oh, Silver. We're out of range now. But we've got to find that posse faster. You see the ranch from the top of the next rise. Burn the wind, boy. Come back yet. We'll have to steady, boy. Steady. Whoa, Silver. Now, there's the corral. It's full, Silver. I don't see any of the men. They must have turned in. 
Wait, there's someone. It's a girl. It's Alice Brent. Whoa, Silver! As Silver galloped across the flatlands toward the Brent Corral, Alice Brent's face was cold and distant. She reached for a rifle leaning against the corral fence and lifted it to her arm. As the Lone Ranger reined Silver to a halt, the rifle went to her shoulder. Right out of that saddle, mister. Reach for the sky. I got you covered. You don't need that gun, Miss Brent. You're right. All I have to do is yell and the boys will come a-running. I'm glad they're back. You're glad? You're heading for jail so fast. Do you believe that Larry Whitten is a bank robber? Well, what else can I believe? He rode off with you, didn't he? I'm not an outlaw, Miss Brent. Uh, you've seen my horse before, haven't you? That... That first day Larry came to town, sure I have. What's the idea of the mask? His name is Silver, and here's one of the bullets I use. Horse name's Silver? Silver bullets? You're the Lone Ranger. Yes, Miss Brent. Then if Larry's a friend of yours, he can't be a crook. He was framed for that bank holdup by a gang of outlaws. The sheriff's inside. You can tell him that. There isn't time. That same gang is driving a herd of your cattle through the pass right now. Rustlers? If we can capture them, then Larry will be cleared. I'll call the sheriff. No, Miss Brent. You believe that Larry is innocent because you want to. That's true. But I won't be able to convince the sheriff so easily. That's your horse, isn't it? I just saddled him. I was going Ride to... with me to the pass. With you? But we can't do anything alone. I got mounted. All right. And I'll call for help. What for? You must make them believe you're being kidnapped so they'll follow us. I understand. Help! Josh, sheriff, help me! Keep it up. It's the masked man! Help me, Josh, help me! That's fine. There's your brother. The boys are coming out of the bunkhouse. Scream! <laughs> Straight through the pass, man. I don't shoot anymore, Sheriff. We will when we get out in the open again. I don't again. shoot anybody. You might hit Alice. What's that cloud of dust up ahead? It looks like cattle. The masked man's a rustler. He's driving off your cows. Josh! There's Alice. Where? At the far end of the pass. Look. That's the masked man in the engine with her. And Larry. Larry Whitten. Train up, boys. Hold your fire. Uh, Oh, they aren't trying to get away at all. There's something mighty funny about this. Clean up, boys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We've got no time to waste, Josh. You and the sheriff, listen to me. Huh? This man's the Lone Ranger. Oh, the Lone Ranger. And Larry's no bank robber. But there's a gang of outlaws up ahead, and we're going after him. From now on, you take orders from the masked man. Lone Ranger? Huh. I should hope to tell you. Do they know that we're on that trail? They must by now. They'll leave the cattle behind. Follow me. Follow the masked man, boys. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. Steady, boy. What are you doing, Smokey? What do you mean? You're reining up. I don't want to push my horse too hard. I'm sticking right with you, mister. You can pull a double cross on the rest of them, but not on me. Let them get ahead of us. That posse's mighty close. Oh, they're stirring up a lot of dust. Yeah? The trail skirts those woods up ahead. Let the rest of the boys go on. We'll duck into the woods and hide out there till the posse gets past. He know. And we only split the money two ways. Two ways. Into the woods when I say the word. You must hurry. What is it, Tello? Men right in the woods. Outlaws? Ah. The woods we just passed? That's right. Thomas he sang. Keep after them, Sheriff. Right. Tello and I are hitting the back trail. I didn't know there was a ravine in here, but we couldn't ask for any better cover. We can hide out here all day. That's a ticket. Lie low and wait for it to get dark. What was that? Don't be so jumpy. One of the horses stepped on a branch. It wasn't the horses. It came from up there on the bank. Quiet. But I tell Shut you... Up. I see where they are. They? I'll just get over to the right a little more so I can draw a bead on that bush and... Uh, see the leaves move? Yeah. That does for him. Whoever it is. Shall we... Shall we go up there and take a look? Uh, might as well. Maybe we'll have to finish him off. What if it was one of the boys? You don't want to split three ways, do you? Yeah, this is the one. Hey, what the... There's nobody here. I saw the leaves move. There's a rope tied to this branch. It stretches over that way. You're coming. Reach. But... <coughs> well, they were 30 <coughs> feet away. They just pulled the rope and made you think they were here. That plenty old trick and work plenty good. That's that horse, Ah. The posse's been trying to catch you two, but now you're going to have to catch the posse. Move. Well, we've got them all. We've gone through all this stuff, but there's no sign of the money you were talking about, Larry. Well, I'm afraid you're mistaken, Sheriff. 
Joe and Smokey aren't here, and one of them must have the money. We won't have to wait long to find out, though. It's the Lone Ranger. And he's brought them with him. But Larry, they must have it. Oh, I hope so. Two more prisoners for you, sir. Good work, mass man. Get them tied up, boys. I say that little matter of the money. It's right here. More than was stolen from the bank in San Marco. You'd better take charge of it, Sheriff. Yeah. Now, how about it, Josh? Can you spare a few of your boys to drive a herd of coyotes to jail? You bet I can. I'm coming along myself. And you, Larry, you'll have to come, too. I know, Sheriff. Clear my name and all the rest of it. But, Larry... Yes, Alice? Will you stay in San Marco? Not if I'm welcome to come back here. Pleasant spot, the valley. Pleasant people in it. Especially... Especially the pleasant people. I think I know what you mean. right -o. I suppose I ought to thank the mask man for that... Thank him for everything else, of course, but... What the... Hey, he's gone. The masked man and the engine have cleared out. There he goes, down the trail. I say, when you see him ride that white horse and you realize he's a fellow countryman, it must make you proud that you're an American. Yeah, it sure does. The, the English aren't so bad, Larry. Oh, I'm glad you said that, Alice. Hands across the sea, what? Shake on it, partner. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>